Um, so first of all, I want to make sure you have subscribed to our channel. That way you don't miss any of these that we do. And it also helps you. You can go back and watch all the other ones that we've previously done. And we love your comments. So please comment, like, um, comment throughout this because we'll kind of, as we're going through each like topic of the gut, we can answer questions along the way, but then always at the end, we will answer questions as long as it pertains to what we're talking about today. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Love the engagement. Yes, the engagement is, is huge. So, um, and if you're new to joining us, welcome. We love newcomers and we love repeats. Repeats, that means you like listening to us and you've learned something from us. And the feedback really has been great. I oh, mean, yeah. you know, we're, I'm told very often that what we bring to the table is very educational. And again, we try to um, not get too scientific and too in-depth about something because that's not necessary. It's necessary just to understand and make the, you know, let us make the point so you guys can have a take home message and something to act on. Um, and before we start, if you guys hear knocking, sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. We're next guys. to a warehouse and apparently they're doing something and um, the banging keeps happening. We are in one of our two warehouses here. And, yes. And uh, next door neighbors are banging away. Yes. Um, okay, so today we're going to cover the science of the microbiome, how to decrease bloating and improve digestion, which most people think about when we're talking about the gut. Sure. The relationship between anxiety and the gut. So there's the brain connection there how to achieve fat loss by focusing on the gut, what factors impact the gut microbiome, and then how to really fix and work on the gut microbiome, which will come into our introduction of our Live Good Probiotic Gut Support Supplement yep. that we just recently launched. Super excited about that. So first, let's just kind of dive into the science of the microbiome, because maybe you've heard microbiome, maybe you've just heard gut. Let's talk about it. So the gut, microbi the, the, gut, the gut microbiome refers to all the microbes, okay, our bacteria, viruses, fungi in our intestines. And other stuff. And other stuff, yes, but the main categories. Yeah. Yeah. And they help us digest food. They support our immune system, mm -hmm. our heart, and our brain health. So it's these microbes, what's going on in our gut affects so much of our entire body. So we have to understand that, um, the, the importance of it. So the gut microbiome begins to affect your body the moment you are born, the moment you enter this world. And as you grow, your gut microbiome diversifies, meaning it starts to get more in different kinds of microbial species. So we talk about what um, when we're born. So we get so much going through the birth canal and then also being that first you know, breastfed from, from the mother. There's so much that goes on into um, the beginnings of our, of our gut. Yeah, those two things are really important too, right? I'm not to say that cesarean sections are um, you know, unnecessary because they'd certainly serve a place, right, in, in, medical, in the medical world. Sure. Um, but if, if you have the choice, you absolutely want to go for a natural vaginal birth and you absolutely want to breastfeed. Right. And even if no it's doubt. not long-term, I mean, I understand everybody's right, to colonize. things are different, mm -hmm. but the very beginning, yep. that beginning colostrum, just those first few weeks are That's crucial right. to help the baby form, form that gut microbiome again. It starts that very beginning. Sure does. Okay? So, and finally, formula has caught on to some of the things that are happening as far as the microbes that are there and what they're doing and how they're breaking down certain fibers that the human body cannot break down. So it's fascinating science and it's pretty conclusive. It's not like it's just, uh, you know, speculative at this point. Like right. They're pretty sure that like, this is pretty certain that this is the way it goes. Sure. So. And just to give you like a little fun fact of what's going on, there are more bacterial cells. There are more bacterial cells uh -huh. than in the human body than, sorry, in the body than human cells. There are more bacteria cells mm -hmm. than human cells. So it's pretty crazy. So we really need to pay attention to these because you also have to think about it too. Like not all bacteria are good, you know, right? So it's a diverse microbiome, but also a well-balanced microbiome is our goal. Yeah. So I really, it, again, it's very important for overall health to have a diverse and balanced microbiome. That is the number one goal for all parts of what's going on, whether we're discussing something about the brain, whether we're discussing the heart, the gut, it is extremely important to have a diverse and balanced microbiome. And you maybe have heard of the term dysbiosis. That's when we have an imbalance in our in our gut uh, microbiome. So mm -hmm. maybe there's there's more bad than good, or we just have a too much of one kind and not of a, not enough of another. So we're we're unbalanced, right? Um, I don't know. Do you have anything to elaborate on? Just kind of a little bit of the nitty gritty, the science behind it all. 
No, but accept, accepting the fact that the gut, the microbiome is so unique. It's N of one to you. It depends on where you live. It depends on all of your lifestyle habits. It depends on the medications you take. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Sure. But again, where you live, source local. Try to source local foods. Try to eat things that are as fresh as possible, that are ripe, that are high in phytonutrients and high in fiber. I mean, these are the things that we'll talk a little bit about today. But uh, again, trying to trying not to eat from things that are covered with barcodes, right? You don't want to eat too much processed yeah. food. And we'll talk about that today, but sure. certainly just you're going to cover so many of the bases of, of supporting the diverse microbiome just by choosing locally grown natural foods, right? Whole foods. Right. So, you know, you think about, let's just like think about our skin, for example, is uh, our skin is reflective of our skin health is sure. like a lifetime of aging. So maybe we never Wait, say that again. When maybe we a lifetime of aging, like of sun exposure. So our skin, our skin, we, we, we are no, born. Oh, you're saying just as this. Right. Skin. We have okay. like we have our skin, and as we age, sure. Depending on what we do and did with our skin, right? Sun exposure, diet, all that. Same thing goes with our gut. So like a lifetime of like poor diet and sure a, a bad lifestyle is yeah. really going to take toll on that gut. Now, it doesn't mean the one cool thing about the gut is it's very adaptive. Like you can make changes to the gut pretty quickly. Um, it doesn't mean that once they change, they're there. It's something you constantly always have to work on. But I don't want you to think if it's something like you've constantly been eating poor your, your whole life and lack of exercise, poor everything, and then you've decided to make a change that, you know, there's no turning back. You just have a lot of work to do. That's all. <laughs> I, were you trying to? Trying to draw a parallel between, so you're just trying to use that skin as a metaphor, as an example yes. of how the gut can also show signs of aging. Right, but, but we, we don't, don't see our we gut. We don't see our you're gut. Our skin. In, the, in the skin with excess sun and, yeah. and toxins. And okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah. I follow. Thanks. Very cool. Clearing that up. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, three to four days actually would be about the timeline you could expect to see a change if you if you made a major adjustment to your gut, uh, or your food intake, or by supplementing with a probiotic. Three to four days, and you can start right. to see significant which is, changes which is awesome and it again is. it doesn't always stay there so you have to keep working you can't just do it and stop yeah you gotta take care of it okay so let's talk about how to de decrease bloating and improve digestion because maybe talk about digestion first but like can i talk about that real quick yeah like if you're going to go for food right you're going to eat food the first thing you do is you get you, you smell it so your olfactory balls we talked about this with essential oils the impact of what happens but from a digestive process it's already started releasing enzymes and preparing the the, the, the the mucosal lining to go to work. So the mouth starts breaking it down with enzymes. And obviously as you, as you digest, it goes into the stomach where it gets tumbled, you know, and, and, pul and pulverized in, into, into sort of a sludge. At the same time, it's releasing all these enzymes. It's releasing all of, and of course, the microbes, the bacteria, the virus, the, the, the different things that are in there, the fungi, that all this stuff's going to work to break down this food. Uh, and a lot of stuff's happening in the gut, but really most of your nutrients absorb in the small intestine. So this is the digestive process, right? And then by the time it reaches your large intestine, your colon, it absorbs back the water. And then, you, of course, you void through your rectum. But um, this whole process is such an important component to how we extract nutrients out of the foods we eat. And you'll hear that the bacteria, specifically the bacteria, play a giant role in this process. Right. So, and there's so many, I feel like, you could probably relate to this, but there's so many of you that have been diagnosed with IBD, irritable mm. bowel disorder, mm -hmm. IBS, you know, which falls under it. But it's it's basically a category of not necessarily knowing what's going on, but it's a category of symptoms that we get: bloating, gas, diarrhea, constipation, and it all it all starts with a, you know a disrupted microbiome. Sure. And uh, but a lot of times, you know, it's hard to know the root cause, like what is going on, unless you go through testing, you know, you do stool samples, you get to test the microbes of what's going on in your gut. It, it, it's a hard thing to, to treat. So it just kind of lumped into like, these are your symptoms, you have IBD. Okay. Um, so really what's going on when a lot of the, the gas and bloating um, and poor digestion happens is our food is not being digested properly. It's being fermented in our gut. Exactly. Uh, we get overgrowth of bacteria, we get it, yeast. Exactly. Um, and, and, and all of that going on will lead to the bloating and lead to the gas and discomfort. And I mean, I think there's nothing worse than a stomach ache. So I go, right. You know? So, so right here, yes, bloating, please. I need help with that. So Lisa was saying, and exactly what Lisa said, a dysbiosis, the wrong balance of bacteria, you, different things going on, whether it's medical, we'll talk about the causes that throw this dysbiosis into play here, but 
man, you get that food in there and now a lot of it doesn't digest. Some of this stuff, the fibers that cannot get broken down by the human body are now just in there fermenting and they're putting off gas and, and they're just, the bloating is a real problem, but it's a byproduct of, what? Well, no, keep going. No, I'm going to yeah. say something, like example it's, here. It's just a byproduct of poor digestion right. because of the lack of the, 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 the dysbiosis. Sure. So think about when something in your fridge has been sitting there too long and it ferments and, and like maybe and say it's in a pop, plastic yeah. container and it kind of blo you know bloats out, swells. And you, or you open it, it explodes. I mean, that is what's going on in your gut. That is your bloating. There goes your, your gas. I mean, it's it's horrible. So a lot of people that have the IBD, IBS um, have a different composition uh, in their microbiome. They have less of the protective bacteria and more an abundance the pathogenic, of the pathogenic bac yeah. bacteria. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, it's again, it's just something that you need to, you need to work on, but you need to understand first, like why it's going on, because there are so are so many other things that can affect the gut. So oh, yeah, sure. Let's it gets go through. confusing. Let's, let's get through some of those. Um, and I mean, I just want to just speak while well, I'm just saying this, like speaking from example and always, like we talk about always finding the root cause. Yes. So um, a few years ago, I had all of a sudden out of nowhere, irritable bowel syndrome. I couldn't figure out what was going on. I didn't change anything. Everything seems right. I went to the GI doctor, got checked out. Everything was totally fine. And I just... I tried a low FODMAT diet. Like, I mean, I was doing everything by the books and nothing was working. And then thank God for my functional medical doctor, but she found out I had mold toxicity. You know, we had um, mold in our, which is unfortunately very common in Florida because mm -hmm. of our high humidity. Um, but we had a leak that we didn't know about. And we also had um, things going on in our air conditioning. So think, thankfully I was properly diagnosed and I was able to work on that. But again, it's, okay, you have to find the root cause because everybody has a different reaction to things. But when my toxicity went straight to my gut, it completely disrupted my gut. So um, yeah, so many things can happen. Um, okay, this is another big one. When I talk about the gut is the second brain, right? There is a relationship between anxiety, depression, and your gut. There's an, a relationship between mood disorders and your gut. So that comes, the gut is a second brain. Um, now, serotonin is our feel-good hormone. And a, lot of, and a lot of times with that, you think, okay, that comes from the brain, right? The central nervous system. Mm -hmm. But 95% of serotonin is produced in the gut. I know there's many other things and you're going to hit on that. But I mean, that right there just shows you how important it is. Because if something bad, negative is going on down here, think of what it's doing up here. And they can have the you know, inverse relationship. Whereas um, if you already have depression, anxiety symptoms, gut dysbiosis can make it worse. And gut dysbiosis without this can all of a sudden cause mood disorders, right? So, um, and a lot of this is like, involved between the gut brain access. And I, I don't want to get too technical with that, but just knowing that um, the gut microbiota, it, microbiome Biota. is made of trillions of microbes that interact with our nervous system. So an imbalance there contributes to that anxiety and depression An inflamed gut, which mm -hmm. is, is part of this um, microbiome releases chemical messengers that travel to the brain. So this is what I'm talking about, right? Gut brain access, they, they affect each other. So we really need to, if we have things going on, um, stop just thinking like something's going on up here. Let's let's go down and address the gut. Let's see if we can maybe change our microbiome by adding in a supplement and taking care of our diet and working on our lifestyle and see if improving our gut in turn improves our brain. <clears throat> So much in there. Yeah. Wow, and it's also huge. like when you get nervous, like, yeah. right. They, they say this, like the butterflies in your, in your stomach. I mean, not, there's not really butterflies in your stomach. Nothing's going on in your stomach, but it's like that whole connection there. I mean, it's, it's for real. Yeah. And then chronic, chronic inflammation in the gut lining. So there's things that wear away, like the mucosal lining and the cilia, these little like finger, like feather, like feathers that, that help with absorption, increase surface area. But either way, there's like tight junctions that break down. You might've heard of things called like leaky gut or increased gut permeability. So just as some beneficial compounds get absorbed and can travel to the brain, like the short chain fatty acids, things like butyrate, um, some of these inflammatory mediators will do the same. They'll make it through the, the, the blood, I'm sorry, they'll make it through the, the gut lining. They'll actually absorb and they'll make their way through the blood brain barrier and into the brain. So that's when they can have a lot of detrimental effects, of course. Um, but when you talk about serotonin, you're not even just talking about being the feel-good hormone. You're talking about growth factors. You're talking about learning, memory. You're talking about sleep. 
you know, there's all these different things that serotonin's involved in. And yeah, you're right, 95% of it is produced and stored in the gut lining. That's huge. But in today's society, this is what like this is the stuff from the pharmacist inside of me makes me a little bit crazy because people would very much rather get prescribed like Lexapro or Prozac and take a medication, just one one tablet a Some day, type of antidepressant. antidepressant medication, which is a seroton SSRI, which is a serotonin selective reuptake inhibitor. So therefore, it increases the amount of serotonin in the synapses, so in the like in the synaptic cleft. So therefore, more serotonin to do more of the things that we think we're deficient in. Right. Think about this. So we're taking an SSRI to increase our serotonin, but most only five percent of it is made in the brain. But most of our serotonin is down produced and stored in our gut lining. So if we're taking the SSRI and we have never addressed our gut problems, we're just taking now a medication that also has other downstream effects. It has other drug-induced nutrient depletions. It has side effects like sexual dysfunction and different other issues. And I can always I can always comment with you individually on email if you want to ask me about specifically about SSRIs. But and it's not just serotonin. You know, you're talking about 30 plus neurotransmitters or so, like things that are made or produced in the gut. So. It, you, dopamine, right? The feel good. Uh, dopamine is more, more the reward center. Um, norepinephrine. I mean, these are the three big ones that are played in the brain world as far as like depression, mood, mood disorders. You need to say something. Right. Well, when you're just talking about dopamine, I, like that's, you know, like, our feel good hormone. Reward center. So yeah. is that like that's, similar to say um, um, when we eat sugar? Correct. Yeah. We're eating sugar so, mm -hmm. in our digestive system. But yep. what does it do? It lights it, up. It lights up the, our brain centers, the reward which, center. Yeah. The reward, yeah. And that's the problem with the food scientists today. You know, they're job is to figure out ways to light up those centers and it really is an addictive food behavior which is kind of scary and some of the studies i've read pre predating the development of this this gut support was food addiction and how mm -hmm. probiotic and certain balances of microbes can actually um i don't know, not prevent but like help you wean off and not become addicted to some of these foods and maybe even catch it all right early enough for right, it. Right. But I mean, so you're talking about those three big ones. Like there's other medications that go after the norepinephrine pathway, right? We just talked about SSRIs. There's other ones that go off after norepinephrine. There's of course there's dopamine involved in this whole process. Guys, there's so many other important ones. There's uh, glutamate. So glutamate is an excitatory uh, neurotransmitter. And you'll see that we have glutamine in this product. Glutamine and glutamate are also precursors to the neurotransmitter. So they're really important in that process as well. They're also produced in the gut. Um, GABA. You guys have heard of GABA ever? GABA is the inhibitory neurotransmitter. It plays a huge role in, in, in slowing us down and making sure that we have a balance in homeostasis. And, of course, there you go. That also plays a role in the, in the um it, it, it produced in our gut too. So, guys, like 30-plus neurotransmitters. I mean, no wonder why they're calling the second brain. And this this topic is so diverse and such a big big issue. You know, they're studying it like crazy now. Um, so much literature out there. It's just it's it's crazy. But when you know these basics, these are super basic things, right? Like, but when you know these, then now you can really start to kind of okay, this all makes kind of sense, you know. But I will say, it starts with food. Food is medicine. That's mm -hmm. where it starts. This this by itself won't fix all your problems. You take this, and you still go to McDonald's once every single day, and you still process food, it, and you're just constantly drinking sodas and junk. Yeah, it's not. It's never going to get much better for you. Right. Very, all right. What, very are true. On, what are we up on next? Let's just hit up on fat loss. Fat loss and the gut. So maybe the barrier that you've been working on, you're doing everything right, but you're not really focusing on your gut as much, and and you're having trouble losing weight. I mean, there are several reasons for this. And this it doesn't have to be your situation, but I just want you to think that there, there's the relation, relationship. So an altered neurotransmitter production. So mm -hmm. what's going on? We just talked about food the relationship. Yep. Um, it, it makes us, yeah, addicted to food. This is exactly what Ryan was just hitting on. So it, if we're addicted to this food because of what's going on from the, the gut to the brain, we're eating more. We're consuming more calories. We're consuming more junk. The junk is therefore still screwing up the gut, the microbiota, leading to more and more dysbiosis, but it, we're still consuming more calories. That's the biggest thing, the caloric intake that is happening because of this altered neurotransmitter production. Increased inflammation, increased inflammation, weight gain. I mean, and that's that's all over, but I mean, your gut specifically. Um, enhanced permeability. So that's, people talk about leaky gut, right? It's not really a medical term, but people understand it as leaky gut. And it's, in a nutshell, it's like little junctions in your gut lining that are open. So food particles are getting out into your system. Um, so you're in your body and they're not supposed to be there. Clearly. So your body almost like attacks it and has this like 
response to it. So you end up being becoming intolerant to certain foods. Um, so all that can lead to inflammation, um, bloating, uh, you know, constipation, all those. And recognizing that this isn't all just the job of, of, of the microbiota, right? This isn't just bacteria, yeast, mold, fungi. Like that's not, it, it's enzymes as right. well. So sure. we're going to talk about the enzymes yeah, yeah, yeah. and why we included enzymes, how many we included yep. for what reason, because like she said, breaking down and the bloating and the digestion and the weight gain. I mean, there's many organs involved in that digestive process. I didn't mention earlier when I just talked about when the food goes down, but you've got, you've got um, the bile, bile is being released to, to emulsify fats. You've got sure. the pancreatic uh, release of enzymes. You know, you have all these different chemicals that are being just blasted down into the gut to help break down these foods. Right. Um, and when, yeah, when, when you're eating a lot of this processed food and your body's inflamed, it's just not functioning at an right. optimal level. Sure. A hundred percent. And with the leaky gut, I don't want to go too much into this. I mean, you can ask me more on it. You can Google it. There's information out there, but lipopolysaccharide LPS, mm, LPS. it is a toxin that is actually, um, released in leaky gut. And this right. causes weight gain. I mean, it is a toxin that is per like, is going into our body from our gut. Toxic I mean, metabolite. Yeah, it's crazy. So there's a lot of research on LPS and weight gain. So, I mean, in a nutshell, guys, we got to take care of our gut. We really got to. And also, um, you know, we were, of course, we're going to talk about our probiotic gut support, but also understand that your gut lining is made up of collagen. So we do have our collagen peptides that just, you know, you just want to, cover all your bases. You oh, I forgot that too. The colostrum, the colostrum, the colostrum too. Yeah. When I was talking about leaky gut earlier, guys, you're not going to get that just fixed on its own. It's a big thing. You got to really focus on, but colostrum is beneficial. Yeah. Glutamine, which is in this product is super beneficial. Yeah. There's um, a lot of healing and repair a lot of that healing, goes into it. Exactly. The immunoglobulins are in colostrum. Um, the first milk postpartum, not to go off on that tangent, but sure. I mean, if you look at our, um, our, 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 chocolate whey protein. So the uh, whey isolate, you'll, you'll see colostrum in there as well. Mm -hmm. So yes. And, and they are taking, um, they're doing these twin studies these identical twin studies. And they're finding these, obviously the ones that they're finding for the study is when you have identical twins where one is obese and one is not, and they're testing the gut microbiome and there's major, major differences. So it's showing that like, this is completely lifestyle driven. So you take you, the obese microbiome, has been living a toxic lifestyle and it shows in the gut. And obviously that contributes to the weight gain. It's all a vicious cycle. How are you doing? I, I was just, I was looking at the one from the question about SIBO. So oh, yes, I, I, yeah, let's touch on that now. Just Go ahead. why not? Go ahead. Okay. So Didn't you have, did, were you, did no, you I was not. I did the test. You did the test. Okay. Yeah. So Kelly asks, what's your suggestion for someone with SIBO? This is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Yeah. Um, and it is very true. Most probiotics make it worse. And that typically is like the first sign when a doctor's working with you, trying to, to figure out what's going on with you. You have all these digestive issues and they give you a probiotic and your symptoms get worse. worse. Yep. That is a sign that you do have SIBO. Um, SIBO is actually easily treat, treated mm. with an um, antibiotic. Mm. And this antibiotic is one that is just isolated in the gut. It goes directly to um, that bacteria. So it's not one that is reported to cause other issues. And we always want to say, you know, avoid antibiotics at all cause, you know, if you, if you really can. But this is one that acts directly on that bacteria. So it's not known to get rid of all the other good bacteria. So my thoughts on it is get tested. see this to the, the doctor, test get tested. And if you do have it, use the antibiotic to treat it. Um, that was one of the things that I did when I was going through my mold toxicity, because I had to just rule everything out. And of course I never thought mold, but I went to the SIBO and I couldn't believe it was negative. Cause I was like, just, I needed an answer. Give me something. But yes, that's uh, definitely get tested. And I mean, some doctors honestly might just say like, if you have all the symptoms and then they give you a probiotic and your symptoms get worse, they might just treat you, um, you know, without the test, but the test is like three, maybe three hundred dollars. It's, I mean, it's good to know. You want to, you want to get rid of this. Yeah, and then you got to remove, right? You got to remove by starting by removing. Then you kind of replace by re-inoculating. So mm -hmm. then you start supplementing back, but you're really yep. focused on your foods more than anything. Yeah. Um, so okay, cool. Let's, um, okay, let's so what on. factors impact the, uh, the gut microbiome? I'll breeze through these. Yeah. Most of them we've are actually we discussed in this, but okay, we said the diet is very yeah, important. Huge number one. And even like a super high fat diet with your your low quality fats and a low fiber diet to disrupt the microbiome, mm -hmm. you know? So again, mm -hmm. whole foods, vegetables, fruits, nuts, beans, whole grains, yep. physical activity too much 
can disrupt the microbiome and too little can disrupt the microbiome. So you want to find that happy balance of moving our body. Physical, okay. Yep, exactly. Um, dietary supplements. Okay. I'm saying things that impact, but dietary supplements will help the gut microbiome. Medi medications, PPIs. Proton pump inhibitors. You guys that are out there taking meds for your heartburn, mm -hmm. watch out. You're altering the pH, which is a big component of the viability of most bacteria in the stomach. So the stomach should be super duper acidic around two. Proton pump inhibitor inhibits the pump of proton, the hydrogen ion, which is acidic. So we make hydrochloric acid, HCl, hydrochloric acid in our stomach lining for a reason. And we're disrupting that with PPIs. Right. And, and the like H2RAs, the histamine 2 receptor antagonist. So those are your uh, famotidine, pep you know, Pepsi, basically. There's two classes. Email me if you have any questions on those. But, but again, these Big are all time. directed on the gut. So you're given these Ruining the stomach to help your gut. Hurting bone say. density. There's so many downstream effects of not being able to absorb nutrients like like iron, like uh, calcium, like vitamin C. I mean, there's these different things you're just not going to absorb, and your body is very deficient when you take these for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. And of course, we said antibiotics. Like we know antibiotics. Like, we know antibiotics do not. Is that yours or mine? Yeah. Looks like, Sorry, our battery just. Yeah, battery. Um, antibiotics. Um, besides the one I was talking about with SIBO, but when they come in. Their job is to get rid of the bacteria and they're not saying, oh, you're a good bacteria. So we're going to leave you there and we're going to take away that bad right. bacteria. So therefore, when you're on antibiotics, you have to be super careful. You need to make sure you're really supplementing with a um, probiotic. So, um, yeah, always make sure combo. Okay. Um, certain cooking utensils, I mean, aluminum, things like that can affect our, our gut microbiome. Sweeteners, sucralose, sucralose aspartame, saccharin. I mean, sucralose, yeah. guys. Artificial sweeteners are tough. Sucralose is... Still, aspartame you still see, but I think we all know, you know, avoid that. Um, sucralose is still in a lot of things. It's a lot of supplements. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times yeah, when I'm getting a supplement to review and I look at weird, it, I'm weird. like, boom, number one, sucralose. I don't need to look any farther. I mean, it is an artificial sweetener that disrupts the microbiome. So if you read your labels, read your labels. Um, stress, high stress. Yeah, high stress. High stress. But again, that also comes to like the high stress, depression, the, you know, it, uh, it's a nasty feedback loop for sure yeah. when you get stuck in it, but work on the food. Right. And we said C-section, birth, C-section, breastfeeding. We talked about that. Yeah. So it's so important to really avoid what you can work on, what you can do. Um, take your supplements. What would, well. you say, what would you say to somebody like this right here though? So massive bloating, like, would you say to like, like food elimination, where do you go with this? Do you do functional testing for SIBO? Because, I mean, because the traditional gastroenterologists aren't really going at the root cause; yeah. they're just looking for something super obvious, right. and they're more likely to put you on a medication that can disrupt the microbiome sure. further. So, yeah. So this is where I go. Like, I I really value functional medical doctors that look at that search to find the root cause. And again, that's how my mold toxicity was, was came up. But I would just start with the process of elimination Food of things. Elimination. Um, start. With, and well, I would also I would do the SIBO test. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean. You know, if you can afford these things, do what you can to check it off the list. Um, you could also do a stool sample test. Um, you know, this is all done with functional medical doctors as well. They can see what balance of microbes you have in there, and they can really work on you to get rid of uh, the bad. But again, it's a lot of what and we're talking about. If you don't about. have the means for any of this, it's food. Seriously, you can yeah. you can spend less money by food prepping with locally sourced whole foods than you would buying true. lunches and dinners out. That Trust very me, true. just go for the natural foods and start trying. Yes. Well, I was going to say, look up the, the low FODMAP, FODMAP, FODMAP diet. FODMAP, FODMAP, now, FODMAP, it is, it is, FODMAP. it's a strict program, but it's not, you're not supposed to stay on it. This is supposed to help you take steps back and kind of figure out your triggers and what's going on. Um, and sometimes it could just be as, you know, you might have trouble breaking down certain foods. Like I love vegetables. Vegetables hate me. Okay? Right. This is always going to be me. Sure. I, I, I've tried everything and I, I just, I feel so much better when I stick to like meats and fruits and Stuff like that. Of, of course, I eat my vegetables. I just know, you know, be careful. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just process of elimination. But like Ryan said, start with food, look up the low FODMAP diet, and just take some steps back and see what really aggravates you. Um, okay, how do we fix the gut microbiome? And there we're we gonna, just talked about yeah, some of that. Yeah, so, we, you look, we really... obviously know how much we focus on food, exercise, lifestyle alterations, you know, reducing toxin loads, reducing smoking if you are smoking minimizing the consumption of alcohol, some of the irritants, different things of that nature, but yes. gut support. Sorry. Is, yeah. Gut support is going to be the next obvious, obvious recommendation, right? I mean, which by the way, I've been using it and absolutely loving this product. Two capsules on an empty stomach every morning. Yes. Um, Where are we? 
No, it was just talking, giving, you know, an example, but um, he's, he's talking about how the bacteria in your mouth affects it's everything, huge, but there's, yeah. there's also a major relationship between like the bacteria in your mouth and heart disease. So yeah. well, yeah, there's, I, I you know, I'm sure your dentist has, has talked mediators. to you about that. So exactly. Yeah. There's lots of things that go on um, in our mouth first. Yeah. I like this Pat, Patrick. Thank you, man. Yeah. Um, so basically he was saying also like our toothbrushes, like we're putting like plastic yeah. crystals in our mouths and like, yeah. but they, they make ones that, you know, made from bamboo and, for sure. Yeah. So yeah, good tip. Um, good tip. Cause it starts in the mouth guys I'm telling yes. you big time. Okay. So right, we're going to, we're we? going to just jump right in right now. This is it. Okay. okay. We're going to talk about our, our newest launch, our live good probiotic gut support supplement. Um, now supplementation with probiotics, prebiotics, symbiotics, um, they, do such amazing things for our gut, but they also help our hormones, our mm -hmm. neurotransmitters. I mean, mm -hmm. so many things that we've kind of talked about. So since you are the formulator. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Should we go? Yeah, let's talk about yeah, it. Yeah, so let's just clear up what prebiotic, probiotic, symbiotic, postbiotic really is. So we are talking about prebiotics uh, and probiotics, um, which is what you would consider symbiotic. So you're getting, there's a relationship between the two. Prebiotics is typically just, let's just simplify it by saying it's fiber but it's the source for which the bacteria will feed on. So it's pre the probiotic is the actual live bacteria. When you're looking for a supplement and you're considering a supplement, you'll see it basically as, you know, colony forming units, CFUs when we measure there, um, active AFU, but here, here's what you really want to focus on. Are they listing the strain? You want to know what strain is there. That's important stuff. Uh, and of course the, the weight, the quantity of, of units is important as well. Uh, these, what you want is a stable, you want a stable platform. Um, we chose not to go with spore forming, but that's fine. We wanted these 10 strains. These were actually culture, culture just for us, uh, for our batch. Um, but that would be, this is the probiotic aspect. And then of course we had the prebiotic, which oh, it's so funny. I can actually sometimes, where do I have the prebiotic? Oh, it's the artichoke coat heart and the blue agave heart. We put, we did them both as USDA certified organic ingredients. Um, but those are your prebiotics. And if you read about them, those are super beneficial in more ways than just being prebiotics. So then they're, they're the probiotics then will feed on that and create the postbiotic, which is really the byproduct of the metabolism of the break of the breaking down of the prebiotic fiber. It's the metabolites. That's what metabolites are. It's the byproducts of, okay. of metabolism. And so these metabolites are really important, you know, and a lot of them, what people hear about is like butyric acid is a really common one. That's the one that butyrate. So, and that would be considered postbiotic and different things. It's the environment in which after the metabolism is done, it's, it's a beneficial environment for future and stable growth of bacteria and okay. to, to say, to stay there. So it's a great thing. And then of course, digestive enzymes. So if you look and listen to the way the digestive process works and you see how much enzyme is, is, a, is a part of this digestive system, you're, you're like, oh my gosh. And then the literature that has been now coming out, there's like two studies and they both showed like significantly, were significantly under, um, under producing enzymes. Right. On, because again, most people, guys, we're talking about 70% of the United States population is overweight or obese. You know, your pancreas is pretty stressed. Pancreas plays a role as an endocrine and an exocrine gland. So it does two things. It releases hormones like insulin, but it also does other things like digestive enzymes. And then of course you have other organs that are playing the role. So by supplementing with enzymes has been a show, been demonstrated to be very beneficial. Right. They'll break down proteins. They'll break down fats. They'll break sure. down carbohydrates. I was just going to go there. So I'm going to use an example for my mom. My mom does eat a lot of protein. Mm -hmm. um, she's very healthy, uh, very healthy in shape. Uh, but she, every time she does, um, blood work with her functional medical doctor, it always shows like her protein low and other tests are showing that she's not absorbing. She's like eating all this protein, but it's just not absorbing it. She has to make sure that she's taking digestive enzymes because it needs to break down. And there's digestive enzymes for each specific category, like Ryan said, mm -hmm. proteins, carbohydrates, fats, but she needs to make sure she has her specific ones to break down the protein. Otherwise you're just like eating this stuff. And like, if it's not fully breaking down. Yeah. You're not absorbing it. Yeah. And also that could lead to gas. Yeah. And there's lactase, you know, there's, you'll see it. You'll see the list of enzymes. And if you have a question on which one breaks down, what happy to answer that for you, you can look it up yourself, but even like the prebiotic, the, the artichoke, the Jerusalem artichoke heart, that actually helps re re release more bile. It, it does stimulate bile release. So beneficial in that regard as well. Um, what else, what else do I know? 
uh, licorice root, marshmallow, slippery elm, slippery elm, and aloe vera. Just there's so many gastric, like soothing benefits of these ingredients. So um, it's good health. It's, it's good health. health. But really, what I want to go back to is the first ingredient listed on there was glutamine. Glutamine. Okay. And you'll see. Um, I just talked about it a few minutes ago, but the benefits of glutamine and the, the repair of tight junctions to improve the gut lining. Yes. Uh, because that's what, it's, guys, it's really important that our gut lining is, has the integrity. I mean, not only, not only do we talk about our mental health, but like there's somewhere 95% of it's serotonin and all that jazz, but like 70% of our immune system. Right. We didn't even talk about we that. We didn't even talk about yeah. immune health. Yeah. And so you have so much going on there. Um, the moment that you start losing that integrity, I mean, so many other things really start to fall apart. But I would say when you're talking about mood, you're talking about immunity. These are two of the biggest things that the gut plays a role in. Of course, digestion and nutrients, absor absorption, um, uh, all those different things. Let me just talk about a couple quick things. They are all in vegetable capsule. These are in vegetable capsules. They're delayed release capsules so that they should last in the gastric peat environment for a little bit longer. There's um, benefits to that. The utility of the, of the microbes is improved. They are in a blister pack, so they are uh, packaged individually so that they're not subjected once you open a container to the same environmental conditions that you would see like in a jar, which is important. Uh, these are shelf stable at room temperature. That's why they do not have to be refrigerated. I still would say go ahead and refrigerate. Of course, that would definitely make sense for any supplement you take. Right. I mean, I'd seriously, if like anything you want to just refrigerate them. Uh, but if you're using them as indicated, you're done with this pack, this box in 30 days. So individual blister packs, as long as they're not stored out in the sun or in a hot, humid bathroom, you will be fine. It's no big deal. Because um, that was a question. Refrigeration was a question. Right. Did you say when to take? Uh, two, two capsules uh, first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. Right. Uh, you can increase the dose if you want. You can experiment with it and see how your gut does and how it performs. Um, also, re recommend your magnesium at night to kind of set that bowel movement up because uh, everybody wants to have stable, uh, normal bowels, you know? Right. So. Right. And normal really is one to three times a day. Yeah. Like normal mm -hmm. texture, everything. Um, yeah. do you know? Mm -hmm. the I can't see. What if you have no longer have a gallbladder? Of course, no impact, but you want those enzymes where the gallbladder would have been releasing some of those, that just the stuff we were talking about. So you want that bile. Um, you want, if you don't have, you, you don't have it. I believe there's an, uh, the body adapts by in, in increasing the release of other digestive emulsifying agents. Um, I have to look that up. It's been a minute, um, but happy to research that for you. Um, okay. So, I mean, this is, what do they take instead of Prilosec? Well, yeah, let's talk about root cause. Right. Yeah. You got to go back to yeah. figuring out it, what's going on that's causing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's where your primary carers really aren't a whole lot of help. I mean, they try to really just tell you that, look, if you want to take your pro PPI away, your Prilosec away, you should taper that. You don't want to just drop that off like a meat, like a cold turkey. So taper off of it. And then you got to go hard on the food, um, figuring out the food. A lot of it has to do with being overweight. And, and if you're overweight and you're taking Prilosec and you stop taking it, your lifestyle changes have to be rather significant. I mean, this is a lot of work. I, I get it. I, I get that maintaining a, positive, a good gut environment is tough. I get that lean body mass is tough. So, you know, commit to it though, because it, it, it's going to be the it's going to be the difference between you living out having a healthy lifespan, uh, matching up pretty closely to your lifespan, um, because that's the key, right? You, you know, you I'd like to be able to call the day, and I think the more we work on on maintaining the integrity of our gut with a lean lean body mass and the different things that we preach about, will help you get there. Right. Um, I just want to say, you know, the, we were talking about the SIBO test. She did. It was negative. I'm um, just asking by putting the probiotics in an, in an enema so they don't ask, access the small intestine. Um, Will they real, still repopulate the microbiome? I mean, you'll get some. Well, no, it would go in the colon. So an enema would only make it to the colon. It would not even, there, wouldn't even, yeah, wouldn't even, wouldn't even make it up to the small intestine and therefore it definitely would not make it into the gut. So it's not going to work done by enema. That would only colonize the, the rectum. And honestly, uh, the, the microbes that are there are different than your balance in your small intestine and stomach. But can I would say if you haven't done it yet, try the low FODMAP diet, uh, or if you've done a food intolerance test with uh, with a doctor, some insurances do cover it. Um, it. It's just a good idea to see your aggravators, and it doesn't necessarily mean you need, these are allergens that you need to pull them out for life. It just something's going on. You probably have leaky gut. There's a lot. So avoiding all these things that your body is reacting to is going to help you take steps back to be able to heal your gut. So therefore you can reintroduce these foods here. I like this one. We need to address this. So you've used lean women's hormonal and now the probiotic and still bloated. So I wouldn't think that the women's hormonal 
the woman's the, pl the bloating you're referring to with hormone imbalances is different than the food uh, digestive bloating referring referring to for the most part. Right. You know, um, the water retention is different. The whole thing is different. But I do think that lean in, is a great complement to this gut support or vice versa, because lean does slow down the gastric transit time. Some of the studies with the GLP-1 uh, agonists are showing benefits with the microbe and the micro microbiota. Um, something to do with the slower process, allowing, I, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but the the lean product has GLP-1 agonist in there in the form of the hops extract, whereas the gut support can really help uh, break down those foods that are going slower through the, 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 the um, GI system. So great complement to one another. But again, uh, Melanie, if you're listening, of course, I would do the things we're talking about to help figure out what your bloating issues are. Um, does yogurt help? I mean, anything yeah. probiotic, prebiotic that you can eat from Whole Foods? Just watch the sugars. 100%. Yeah. Watch your flavored yogurts because the sugar content's huge. Um, does xylitol disrupt the microbiome? Well, we saw this, the benefits to it in the dental oral health. Right. But I'm your not dentist so recommends. I'm not recommends. so convinced that sugar alcohols would be. I mean, I know there was some benefit. There were some studies that showed benefit. I, I quite frankly don't know if there was any bias or any issue or but I know that, that, that dentists always recommend orally right? because the xylitol helps with the oral right. bacteria. Can you take this? You can 100% take it with super greens. Yeah, the yeah. super greens, it has probiotics in it. It has gut health stuff in it. But that's not, I mean, that's not all what, what it is. And it's a minor amount of uh, probiotics think, just to kind of help. I think, Judith, what is the name of the diet you mentioned? I think what you're referring to is the FODMAP. Low F FODMAP, F-O-D-M-A-P. FOD map. Yeah, there's lots of information on it. Just get, you know, it's all, it's about a lot about elimination, eliminating certain foods that are known ah, to cause um, oil gases. Pulling. We talked about po possibly bringing okay. something out in oil, oil pulling. pulling. Yep. Yes. I have one that I love to do. Okay. Um, cool guys. Yeah, so we talked about everything that was in there. Just want to let you guys know, you can find this on our website, livegood.com, but this is, if you're not a member, this is $19.95, which is crazy. This is 30-day supply, 60 capsules in here, two a day, $19.95. And if you are a member, $16.95. I mean, again, we, we make these prices so everybody can take them. So it's not, oh, my gosh, I have to spend $45 a month, but I need this gut health stuff. I'm, you know, we want you guys to have this, and, th and that's our goal. Hey, just to reiterate, best to take this anytime, truthfully, but it's either – on an empty stomach and if you tolerate it well keep doing it that way take it an hour before a meal everybody needs this gut support product this is not simply for people that are struggling with gut issues that is not the case at all everybody should be taking this gut support product it is beneficial across the board but if you are on lean it complements it really really well right and if you if you try the probiotic and you actually say you try it on an empty stomach and it gives you some bloating digestive issues Try with food or try spacing it out, I, maybe one in the morning. I like it before food, the, though, just because you have I, all these digestive it enzymes. It is very important before food. Oh, yeah, sure. But if somebody is having trouble tolerating it, this doesn't mean stay this way. But while you're reintroducing things to your gut, sometimes it helps if you've had a little bit in there. Or maybe you'd be better off taking it at night before bed after you've had like a whole day. So, uh, no, I'm, I definitely like empty stomach. Um, I like the morning before I've had breakfast for sure. So, but you just also need to figure out what works for you. Exactly. Cool guys. All right. Look, everybody, thank you so much. This was a long one, in. 45 Sorry. minutes, yeah. but um, again, we've got health. You could go on and on and on and on and on and on, but check out our product. And again, make sure you subscribe to our channel, like, leave comments, join us every Monday where we do our lives, bring them to you. Great topics. Um, yeah. And we love all your feedback. So thanks again. Take care, guys. See you okay. next time. Bye-bye.